Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> How's it going, guys? Everyone? Uh, day six. Day six of the beer boost. You know, we're probably going to actually end up having about a hundred of these things. Uh, lots of happy people in the chat. Thank you for saying hi. Um, and so I was actually counting it out. If we if we go from Mar, let's see, May May the fourth until the end of July, that's I think about 128 days. Yeah, it's a little bit over 100 days. So uh, we're one class to another. Yes, and we are going to be doing a bunch of different things during that time so uh and i don't know if it's going to end on time or not i don't care we're just going to go one day at a time and make sure we cover everything as we go and keep it very organic and then i'll just tweak it every year that's what we do every year and then we just will adjust it as we go and make it better so at 705 i'm going to go ahead and get started i did get a little bit of a, of a late start today so i apologize for that um we have a few people who've wandered into the chat uh, not a lot to tell you the truth, <laughs> right? I, I imagine there's more people here than are showing up on the indicator, but, oh, there we go. Um, let me just open up this, this monitoring system again. I know I, I, I might as well get some of this done. My streaming ability has, has dramatically, dramatically improved since, since December of 2019 when I started, I've gotten better. Still have a lot of work to do, but... I have gotten somewhat better at this. Um, <laughs> at least that's what I tell myself. Um, all right, how do we? How are we doing? All right, well, it looks like we're ready to go. Wow, thirty nine in there already. Okay, good job, everybody. Thanks for showing up on time. Uh, today is a really exciting day, and anybody who has been watching me for the last twenty four hours knows what's been going on. It's, I've been working on it all week. But, but today in particular, I actually managed to complete uh, the workspace container that I'm using at work and that you can also use for fun. And I kind of wanted to finish that so that we could be sure of what was, what was going to be, you know, usable and stuff. So if it turns out that it's, it's, that you just, you, you want to, I don't know if anything is too hard for you, you can just use the one that I use and, and it'll all work. And then you can work on building your own while you go. It's kind of like, you can kind of like, it's kind of like having a model and then you want to, you have the, the finished one over here and you have the one over here that you want to build, but you want to build it yourself. Right. And it's kind of like, it is very much like, you know, building a car or anything like that. We're going to be tinkering on it and building on it and stuff. So, uh, we're going to get started with the videos right away here. I just wanted to let everybody kind of trickle in. Um, so the uh, first thing, let's go pull up the, again, the website. You guys know what the, the, the website is, I'm sure. Um, yeah, the busiest box. Sir John keeps calling it the busiest box. It kind of is. Uh, let me just give you a sneak peek. So I can do WS and I can, and I can say, I don't know, uh, Skizix. Uh, I can just keep these the same. I can make uh, a different home directory completely if I wanted to, but we'll say we want it to be home Skizix. I should probably improve that so it matches the name. Uh, and you can do Z shell. You want to do Z shell? Yeah. I mean, if you want to, you, we're not going to, but if you wanted to, you could. Um, and this will actually, if you detect Z shell, it'll install it for you. Uh, oh man. Oh man. Of course I would try to go out of the outside the box and, demonstrate stuff that I haven't tested yet. I Z show work yesterday. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So you have a your own workspace. It looks like I'm still on the same computer, right? I'm actually not. I'm on my own computer, but it has fish and everything on it. This is a separate computer entirely. Uh it even has it's official and it's released. You can actually go get it right now. In fact, uh uh I'm gonna we're gonna be talking about it making videos, but if you are really anxious and you want the TLDR uh, go to this site right here. You can go to, um, uh, Tmuxception. I know it kind of is. That's what containers are. It's like a container and a container, a container, a container. Uh, 
go to hub.docker.com. I'm going to put this in the in the notes, so don't worry. Uh, slash r slash rdbx rob slash workspace. And it has the instructions on how to run it right there. Uh, all you have to do, if you have Docker installed, you're supposed to have Docker installed. If you don't have Docker installed, I can't help you. We talked about that yesterday. So Docker run it. Just think of it as it. It, it just means interactive TTY, but that's fine. And then let's throw it away afterwards. We don't really care, right? And then we're gonna. I'm gonna do this again on the video. I just want to make sure it works before I do that. <laughs> and then and then what? And then you just do rwx rob slash workspace. And if you do that, it will take a long time to download the image. It's 1.04 gigabytes, it turns out. Uh, it's it's 1.04. Uh, so we've been taking we've been taking uh, bets all day about how big it was going to end up because it's basically all the stuff from a Linux distribution without the graphics. Um, and so and it takes a little bit to boot up. Mine does because I my that's that's my fault because of my shell scripting. But it's it's going to pay off because you're going to understand the shell startup process better for that little that little delay. will help you understand it because it's all broken down. Uh, if it was all squished together, it would, it would start faster. All right, so 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 here you go. You've got your thing. It it, it doesn't say works today because we just picked a random one, and now you can go. But that's all you have to do. Now you'll probably have to to like wait around for the image to come down. Uh, it would take me like twenty minutes to download that. Yep. If you're on if you're on a bad connection or something, you gotta understand though, you're essentially downloading an entire Linux distribution. I mean, think about that for a second. You're you're downloading, you know, you're you're downloading and you don't have to download the kernel because that's included. Oh no, actually, you kind of do. But you're downloading all this all the good stuff, like you know, the shell and and all the stuff that you need to do any sort of development. Plus, you got all the stuff to set up to do Docker development, to do network administration, uh, to hack. If you wanted to hack, there's a bunch of tools on there that I use to kind of do uh, audit and discovery and stuff. So I, I suppose it's appropriate that I would start today by telling you about this thing. So I'm going to actually tell you about it again. But this time I'm going to make a video about it. And I'm going to delete the image so that this is going to, we'll see how long it takes to download it, okay? So, but, so let's do this. Let's, for, for tonight, let's talk through how to download and get this workspace right away. And you're going to have to update it over time. And we're also going to talk about how to make your own workspace. And the reason for that is because I want you to see the difference. When you, when you, when you download your first Ubuntu, it's so bare bones and ugly. You'll be like, this isn't fun. So I kind of want you to be able to, see what you can make out of it over time. It's going to take time, uh, but ultimately you can end up building that up and make your own out of it. We may actually do some Docker file creation in this boost. I swore I wasn't going to do that, but I think it makes a lot of sense to do to learn about how to make Docker containers while you're learning how to shell script, because that's the most important reason to learn how to shell script today, I think. Uh, I want you to rise up my Arch Lunix so that Luke Smith will be kind to me. Yes. And, <laughs> and you can totally do that too, right? So you can just do Docker. If you want if you want to do Arch instead, so all of you that are out there playing right now, you can do Arch instead, right? So 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 let me let me just remove this image because I actually want to time it. Uh, we're not going to talk about Luke Smith officially on this video. Uh, if somebody comes across this video on YouTube, which will be saved for time and all eternity. Uh, just, just know that I don't agree with pretty much anything Luke Smith says. <laughs> In fact, I think if you follow many of the things that he tells you, not only will you be unemployable, but you'll be a worse person overall because of it. So that's, that's the nicest way I can say that in a public permanently stored repo that might show up. So let's not talk bad about anybody today. Uh, just factually. <laughs> okay. So, um, so how are we going to do this? Let's, let's, first of all, let's get, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, let's, can we just not, can we please not, <laughs> can we just, I want to stay, I want to stay high, let's go the high road, just, just the high road, okay, thank you, uh, other, if you catch me on another day, or between boost videos, which are designed to be family friendly, <laughs> parents don't let your children watch Luke Smith. <laughs> I'm not kidding. 
I am not kidding. Just don't do it. Uh, there's lots of other people. Watch, you know, London Key or or DistroTube or or uh, you know, there's there's tons of people. Um, but yeah, I didn't know you're doing beginner boost. Oh yeah, say yeah, VMP. Yeah, we're doing beginner boost. That's the thing that's in my title. It says you know seven to nine beginner boost every day. Oh, actually, I didn't put it in mine today. It's a beginner boost day six. Mental health is pretty nice. All right. Thank you for that. We're 15 minutes into our 90 minutes. We have 90 minutes, 90 something minutes left. Um, what is it? Yeah. Let's do this. I have to remove an image. So the goal for today, just in case anybody forgot, uh, is to get a container running. So today... If everything goes well, it should be your first day on the command line. You know, learning to love it, using a Docker container to get on the command line. And I'm going to say it again, but if you haven't got Docker on there, you know, go back and watch the video. Turn this off and watch it next week. Uh, you can watch the video on the VODs. It's, it's probably just barely getting published to YouTube because I have a 24-hour delay because Twitch. Um, but so here's, here's the boost. Let's go down and see where we are. So we're not going to do Pagan today. This, this, all this stuff in here is going to get changed over time. This is just a kind of a living document. Uh, run Linux inside a container. That is today's mission and goal and everything. So uh, I already told you if you okay. So let's let's just let's just start a video here and we'll see how far we get. Uh, we're going to do uh, one video about starting a container. Actually. Uh, well, they run your first container, and then we'll say uh, run Rob's uh, workspace uh, Linux container. And I want to put these two in here because I want you to have both. And I, I didn't know if I was going to make it in time, so I didn't want to promise you this was going to be there. And you guys can be my beta testers. Uh, <laughs> all right, so first video is first. Let's do a video here. Uh, run your first Linux container. All right, you guys ready for that? We had enough, enough, enough stuff. Uh, let's see here. Oh boy, what am I doing, Rob? 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 <laughs> I... You know, I've been coding since like seven o'clock this morning, like straight. If anybody's been watching, watch the, like the the made video for today. I have been like coding as fast as possible today <laughs> to try to get this done for both work and this boost. I had to get it. There was two things pushing me, and my wife and family are out of the house. They're in New York picking up my stepson from his apartment. So, uh, here we go. I just fed the dog all by myself twice, actually. She's all depressed though, because the family's not here. It's kind of sad. Like I've just got Rob. Rob's the only one here. Uh, for the command job ran, just ran, right? Create a container before the command Rob just ran. Yes, wait, well no, yes and no. Okay, so here comes the video. <laughs> That'll put me back in track. Yeah, if, if I can if I can do the video, that'll put me back on track. So, 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 ready and mark. Okay, so today we're going to run our first Linux container. A lot of you have probably already done this. Uh, you should already have had, yay, Pomodoro, uh, Pomodoro. Uh, it, if you want to know how to get Docker on your computer, go back and watch the VOD from yesterday, the YouTube video from yesterday. I'm not going to talk about it. You, you should already have Docker installed. If you have already have Docker installed and you worked ahead and you went and you got the, uh, you know, you followed the tutorial, the very excellent tutorial from the Docker people, you know, God knows that I'm very honest in my opinions about software and technology and companies. And I got to tell you, the Docker tutorial, the Docker onboarding is amazing. I don't know who is responsible for the for the at the Docker company for all of their onboarding and helping people install the desktop and get going really easily and the little tutorial that they have. But I want to take a person or team out to dinner because it is amazing. I mean, it, it is it's one of the the easiest processes for onboarding I've ever experienced, and I'm really glad because containers scare people uh, unnecessarily. So uh, I think and and so it's really great to see that. Uh, that happened. So 
if you already have Docker installed, you already have a terminal too. We covered that. We had a whole day about the terminal three days ago. So go watch that about the terminal. I got to talk about it now. So you should already have a terminal. And if you did it, if you got an A, <laughs> oh man, I made myself laugh. I referred to grades in the beginner boost. That makes me really laugh. Um, if you got if you got an A, then then you might even have Groovebox like flashing up there with your favorite colors or whatever. If you're doing that, good job. You're you know you're ahead of the class. And if you don't have that, you need to go back and watch those videos and catch up. Um, if you want to know why to do that or the reason I'm doing it, go back even further. But so I burned up a lot of time there. But I kind of have to refer to previous videos every time because people always ask me questions uh, in these videos in the comments or something, and they don't know about that other stuff. Okay, so um, so how do we run? If you have all that done, it's really easy. I mean, and that's in fact that's probably good. I talked because this is it, people. It's not hard. After this, it's just Docker run it dash it. It stands for interactive and TTY. Remember we talked about teletypes. Remember we talked about teletypes, right? So if you don't have a T, it doesn't give you a teletype. It doesn't give you a TTY. So, so make sure you go watch that video about teletypes. Again, if you're getting the hint here, go back and watch other videos if you're jumping in the middle. So docker.run it. Well, what are we going to run? Uh, and this phones home into, into Docker Hub. Uh, which you should have an account there and everything. And then what? Well, we're going to remove this one. Normally, they wouldn't tell you to do that right now, but we like to keep things clean. So we're going to run... We're going to run... Uh, what whatever you want let's run ubuntu ubuntu is a linux distro we talked about that go watch the video we're going to run ubuntu from here boom all right now you saw how fast i got mine now that was kind of cheating you know why because i already have the image i already have the image and, and you can see i'm root i got command line like every hacker wants it's automatically root for better or worse it's a huge topic of debate among the docker community among the container community in general at large, Podman, by the way, is doesn't run as root. If it's it's complicated. Bottom line, you have root, and now you have to do whatever you want to the thing. You can you can like build it up, and and that's what we're gonna do over the next couple of weeks. You are going to build your own Linux, not Linux from scratch, not Gen two, uh, not the other one. You're gonna you're gonna build it from scratch, okay? Uh, and and let me show you how long it takes if you don't have that. So the reason that worked so quickly. Uh, is because I uh, have the image already. Uh, okay, so we're going to go over, in a different video, we're going to go over all of the commands. Right now, I just want to show you the minimum necessary to get Linux running in a container. That's all this video is about, and we're about done. I'm going to close it up here early. And then we're going to go through each of the major Docker commands and briefly discuss what they're about. Again, the purpose of the boost is to tell you what you need to learn and what you might not need to worry about. It's not about teaching you all the things about that. So you better make sure you know it when I just mention it, unless I say you don't need this. Unless, In which case, you might decide you do need it. So it's up to you. All right, so what's next? Let's try I, I I'm going to teach you. Okay, pretend like you're not seeing this, okay? Shh. Pretend like you're not seeing this. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Shh. Pretend like you didn't see that. Pretend like you didn't see that. <laughs> That's how you get rid of an image and make it look like you never had it before. Okay, so so this is more okay, clear. So this is more like what you're gonna see, right? So here we go again. Docker run dash it dash it. Uh, space dash dash rm has two dashes for the rm i don't know why it just is uh i don't like dash interfaces but whatever now let's try it okay now this is normally what you would see okay that was not that much that didn't take much more time did it <laughs> dun dun da da down 95 down here is is trying to get the workspace image that I created. It's like, what is it? Is it 1.8 gigabyte? We're going to talk about that in the next video. So if you want an image that's more fun, I'm going to talk about that in the next video. So now we have Linux. That's it. All right. But this is what I want to show you, okay? Let's say you want Arch Linux so you can be like all of the cool, clueless noobs on YouTube who think Arch Linux matters. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. So there's Arch Linux. You want to use you, um, uh, yeah, it, yeah. So 
If you want Arch, he's having fun with my new image. Stay tuned for the, the next video. We're going to talk about what Dan, Dan's doing right now. So Arch Linux, you want Arch Linux? Great. You got it. You know, you can learn Pac-Man, which I do not know. I have no idea how to do Pac-Man. Somebody give me a Pac-Man command to install them. Was it Pac-Man? You, you can't do NixOS because it's not containerized. I don't think. Let's try, Aaron. Let's try I want to try. I want to try Nix, uh, Nix OS. I don't think Nix is based on the Linux kernel. No, it's not. See, it has to be a BSD thing or a uh, different. It has to be a Linux-based kernel, uh, or that's not completely true. There's Windows 95 even on there. <laughs> but all right, so let's run. Let's run Arch Linux again. So let's do this. Let's do Pacman. Uh, Pacman s vim. Uh oh, I didn't work. Help me out, Arch people. I am not an Arch person. Uh, Pac-Man, isn't it dash SA or something to update? It's like the same thing as apt update. What is it? Look, I'm just having fun with you. If you're an Arch user, I'm not attacking you personally. Just know that, okay? Unless I did, in which case I'm sorry, but I'm just having fun. Uh, I don't see why you, why you need Arch. I just don't. I don't see why you need... Uh-oh. I forgot about this. Arch has a problem. Yeah, Arch, none of the other Linux distros require this, but Arch has a bug. Arch needs to be dash dash privileged. Uh, I don't know if I did that right. Uh, here we go. Damn, did I spell it wrong? <laughs> I, I can't spell privilege. I'm so sorry. I I don't claim to be a good speller. Did I, I swear I spelled it wrong. Is it? <laughs> I, you know what? I always put D's before G's. Does anybody else do that? I do that all the time. I know what's wrong. Privilege. D. There. All right. Now let's do our Pac-Man. There's no history though, because it's a brand new instance of Arch Linux. So what was it guys? Help me again. So, so, so I love that you guys get to watch me be an Arch noob. S Y Y for some reason. Uh, oh, okay, so that did it. So, so if you are, you have to do the other one first, right, guys? You have to update it first. Now I can do Pacman S Vim. Do I want to proceed? And I'm, I'm going to tell you something secretly. I might run Arch Linux because it's easy as a container. It is. As a container, it's really easy. But you know what else is? You know what else has happened? The whole reason to use Arch Linux has evaporated because of containers. And I'm going to talk about that in another video. How the Linux operating system no longer matters. Kubernetes is the new uh, operating system. <laughs> so, so, so does Vim work? Hey, look, look at that. Bram Mulner. Uh, we can do Vim Tutor. And it's all on there. And you got your arch. You saw it here. Mr. Rob ran arch on his stream on a big interview. So I ran arch, right? All right. So now there's obviously a lot for you to do there. Uh, you don't have to do that stuff with any of the other distros. Let's try another Linux distro, shall we? Uh, let me go find my thing. How do you get the history, by the way? You push the up arrow. And you don't know about set.shovi yet, so I'm not going to give it to you. You just push the up arrow, and you don't have to retype. All right? So you're going to go back up. We don't need this stupid privilege, blah, 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 because Arch. All right, we're going to come back here, and we're going to do... And it, there's a reason it has to have that. It's an Arch reason. Fedora. Fedora is the closest thing to Red Hat. You are going to find... There you go. Now I have Red Hat. So we can do apt... Oh, wait. What is it? Is it... I don't even know. <laughs> what is it? Is it yum update... It is yum update. I got it. I guessed it. Uh, arrow shortcut way later. I should have. Then I should have. Well, yeah. It, it, you have to do the update first, right? I guessed it. <laughs> so now it's now it's it's as if the really great thing about having a containerized Linux is that the Linux containers are super tiny. They're super teeny tiny. You saw that, right? They fit like in under like two megabytes sometimes. They're all under one gigabyte. So. Because they're so small and they have nothing on them, it's really good to practice because you can go over there and practice installing stuff and then throw it away and practice installing it again and then get really good at it. And then like I, as you just saw, I just learned how to use, I just learned how to install Vim on Arch. I've, I've never done that before. I've done that Pac-Man command a thousand times and could not remember it. 
Now I can repeat it over and over again. Remember, exercise the X in RWX. Keep you know practicing it, ex executing it. Uh, and so now we're doing this one here. We got Fedora on here. If you are in a Red Hat shop, Red Hat is the number one distro for enterprise, even though Ubuntu makes a lot more noise. So, so if you want to play around with Red Hat, and let's say you want to learn, let's say you, let's say you want to keep Arch Linux at home, but or even at work, and you still want to learn RPM, you gotta, you've been asked to make an RPM package and learn how to do RPM installs and stuff. Well, you just saw how easy it was. I just ran Red Hat just like that. Fedora is Red Hat. I ran Fedora for 10 years at IBM, and every single thing I did was 100%, including building RPM packages for the company, and every single thing was compatible with Red Hat. So so, so there you go. So uh, Gen 2 and Bootstrap. Yes, you totally could. Is there a Gen 2? Let's see if there's a Gen 2 image. This is going to be really fun. Uh, why Ubuntu over Debian? Uh, we'll talk about that. I, I like Debian and I like Ubuntu. Mostly the PPA, Matt, is the short answer. Uh, we should probably make a video about that, um, actually. Uh, so, uh, so RPM install, I don't even, I don't remember. Is it yum? RPM is like, uh, like, uh, D package. So what is it? It's, it's yum install, right? Yum install. <laughs> this is bringing back good memories. Yum install vim. The other really great thing I love about about uh, using containers is they don't have anything. They don't have editors. They don't have so if you want Emacs and don't want Vim on there, fine. Put it on there that way. If you just want, you know, you can do the other thing. Now I have now I have Vim. Yay. So but I don't have colors or anything fancy, right? So so my fedora is all running. Now if I wanted to keep this around, I could. This is why I put dash rm because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of this. When you do the dash dash rm, which is probably a good idea, it throws everything away. It throws everything away. If you don't do that, you'll get gobbed down with all these containers. It won't be running, so they won't take away your resources, but they're just garbage all over the place. And you have to collect them or prune them later. So it's if you're just if you're just sampling a thing, you want to do this. In fact, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to tell you another secret. Spoiler alert. I made this script. I made this script called run. Yeah. If you make a script that does this, then guess what you can do? You can just do this. Boom. Fedora. You can do this. Run Arch Linux. Boom. Arch Linux. Run Gen 2. Oh, damn. <laughs> There's no Gen 2. Uh, uh, GUIs. Yes, you can. Yes, you can actually have you can have GUIs. That's an advanced topic for containers. If you want to see somebody who really knocks GUI stuff out of the park, I'm going to send it to you in the mail. Go watch Jess. Wait, go, go duck yourself, Jess Frazzle, uh, Willy Wonka. If you want to be blown away by containers. Go watch Jess Frazzle, who's running her own company these days. Uh, watch, she, uh, she, I really love Jess Frazzle because she actually uses mutt for her email, <laughs> and she's she's like a thirty something, you know. She's 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 a boomer, but not, you know. And and she she actually runs a Steam game from Docker Container. Yeah, it's actually not that hard. The secret is you have to mount the X socket, which is a file, and you can mount any files into containers. You remember I told you about the sandboxing thing? You had to poke holes yesterday kind of thing. Uh, she's not a boomer at all, right? She's she's like millennial, maybe, you know, bordering on Gen X. Uh, uh, yeah, she and Brian Kentrell started up the thing. Anyway, so I've only got nine minutes left. We've been playing around with all these different Linuxes, so I obviously, anybody else have a Linux flavor they want to try? Should we try Suzy? So I'm going to get my Docker line again. Should we try Susie? Where'd it go? Oh, what was me? I, I, I've hurt myself. Um, uh, so, okay, let's do, let's do the, I don't want to use my run command. I'm going to do it so you can get a, get a sense of it. Let's do Susie, Susa, Susa. I think it's, what? Is it Susie Linux? Uh Oh, well, let's go find it. Let's go look. So here we are. We're going to go to hub.docker.com. It's just one of the many registries where there's containers. You can get them from all over the place, by the way. Uh, if you want to pull a registry, open Suzy. Yes, I bet that's it. I bet you're right. I bet you're right. Uh, yet another. I remember I remember my first experience with Suzy with the chameleon. 
in like 2000, 2000, it was in 2000. And it, all the installer was in German. <laughs> I couldn't understand anything. It is not OpenSUSE. I feel sad. It's not in the standard library. So uh, now we want to search up here. So let's see, Suzy, Suza. Um, we're going to check something. Are you running it from the actual container? Yes, you are. You uh, the I don't whatever you want to call it. It's it's borrowing the CPU and stuff, but it's it's inside. It's containerized. So the only thing that it shares is the socket for the graphics. That's it. The file system and everything is still coming from the container, in terms of safety and stuff. Um, but speaking of safety, by the way, since we have a few minutes left, anytime you pull down a repo, including mine, you are running that as root on your computer. Okay, this is probably the biggest and strongest critique of Docker, period. Um, so what I want to tell you about that is that make sure you don't run anything using Docker on your container from a public repo that you don't trust, period. Okay, it's really, really important. Yeah, mounting X socket. Yep. Um Actually, that's how you mount you mount uh, Docker dot socket. You can have Docker inside of your container as well. What I do, uh, you you put user tag at the end of your Docker file, and there you go. Uh, what are you talking about? Oh 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 oh! It needs a it needs one. Uh, what's what's the lastest one? The lastest one. I, okay, so they don't have a latest, or do they? I guess they do have a latest. Leap. I, what's the difference? Why is there a tumbleweed and a leap? Is that are those different distros? I guess they are. Yeah. Oh, they have one. They have a Nix OS. Aaron, we got to do this. Aaron has been an, a strong advocate for Nix OS. This is another example. I hope it works with containers because that, there's nothing that makes the case better than trying an entirely different OS uh, that I've never experienced. I've never used Nix OS, so I've been meaning to try it out. Woo! Look at this prompt. Well, that's fancy. I don't even know how to install stuff over here. I don't know. I do not. How do I install stuff? I have six minutes left. I don't I know how to install Vim. How do I install Vim over here? I have no idea. Uh, deep package? Susie's not deep package, is it? Is it? Is it RPM? It is RPM. It uses zipper. Zipper. Zipper update. Oh, I got it. Learning through experimentation and try and fail. Let me see what if W, the W in, in RWX, what if, you know how I, I just found out that there's a zipper update by just trying it instead of researching it for 10 minutes. So we this is harking back to day zero and day one when we talked about learning. This is why containers are so great. Are you guys are you guys feeling the excitement? This is what makes containers so much fun for learning. It's like this un, you know, just an, a borderless exploration of different things that are out there. And you can just play with all kinds of stuff. I, I had no idea. I've never used Zipper in my life until right now. And I just learned it from you guys. All right. Um, so, so there we go. So there we go. So I, now what? So I'm going to do Zipper. That's way too much to type. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they are. They all they obviously are because they're so different, right? But they're terminal. This is, this is why we're learning in the terminal. Uh, zipper. By the way, if you tried to distro hop like this using a VM, okay, just just pause for a second. Think about the pain and suffering involved to do this sort of distro hopping using even a virtual machine on the same computer, let alone reinstalling it on a different piece of computer every time just to see what it's like now we're just getting to know the terminal obviously but you can still run the entire desktop manager and we should probably make a separate video on how to do that uh yeah but but you know why would you do that you can at least sample all the stuff if you want to sample like i3 on zipper or something like that you can install i3 and mount the x the x socket and then test it out and it'll actually work as long as you have x on there this is actually one of the things i worry about with the whole um Alternative to X is kind of what is it? I forget spacing the name right now. Uh, zipper install Vim. So, 
So we're on Zipfer, and now we we're gonna install Vim and all the. I like man, these installers are way sexier than apt. Wayland, yeah, thank you. Yeah, Wayland, Wayland. So, um, but here's how you can test it. You could actually test this by putting Wayland on one of these containers and then mounting the XSocket and seeing if the graphics work. Containers are good for testing security things, but um, uh, I don't know yet. I haven't. Wayland's an X technology, so I do know that X works with with containers absolutely because X it has a, the way X works is all the communication goes through a socket, and a socket is a file, and a file can be poked into a container and mounted. If you watch Jess's video, that's what she does. All right, so I've only got three minutes left. What other thing can we try? We did not try NIM. Hey, Aaron, you got that for me again? So, what was it? Unix, um, uh, what was it? It was, uh, Nix OS, right? Nix OS Nix. Yeah. There we go. Ooh, a fresh image is being downloaded. This is so much fun. This is like, this is so much fun. If you're a tinkerer like me, uh, the theme song in my head. <laughs> X Files. <laughs> anyway, uh, it does not like it. Apparently not. How about this? Let's do. Let's just do plain old Nix. Repositories exist and require Docker login denied. Damn. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm. I didn't even. It did. The image didn't even come down, which is a bad sign. The Nix team has some work to do. <laughs> So, uh, I suggest, I, I, I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. Is it, anyway, is it, it was Docker's registry. It was a timeout. Mine didn't work. Docs just, that repo does not exist. All right, let's try again. Oh, wait, maybe, maybe it's working this time. Oh, it worked. It worked. It worked. There you go. Thanks. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't read the errors. I'm streaming and distracted. Only got a minute left. Um, Oracle Linux, yeah, you can try try something like call Oracle Linux, and then immediately throw it away. The dash dash rm makes it nice because you don't ever have to deal with it again. It hasn't it hasn't taken over your entire lunch break, you know, trying it out just to make sure you have to fight. Now on the uh, SE Linux, yeah, you could do that. You could do it. you could if you wanted to like torture yourself, you could do SE Linux for sure. Does this have geeks on it? Geeks. Does Nix does Nix use Geeks? Does Nix does Nix use Geek Geeks? Say that ten times. Does Nix use Geeks? Uh, where are the images stored? I don't know. It's magic. <laughs> I'm out of time. Clearly, there's a lot to do here. This has been uh, a conversation about. I gotta put my trail. Oh, here's it. Here it goes. This has been uh, an exploration of all the Linuxes, Linuxes, the Linuxes, the Linux, the, the, li I don't know. This is all of the Linuxes. Are you, you found the images for us? I gotta, I gotta look at this. I learned something today. Tony was a conference presenter, so we're gonna do anything that person says. Uh, is it all locked down? Damn. Damn, Linux I. <laughs> I don't know, but it's really fun. We still got more to do tonight. We have like an hour and fifteen minutes to play around. Check for. I'll, I'll go play with it later. We'll go play with that. But see, this is the best way to learn. You can go try everything now. You can learn every single package manager on Planet Linux by just experimenting because you started right. You started with Docker. I'm super excited because I was a little bit leery about starting out with Docker. Uh, as the first thing, you know, getting a terminal and then getting Docker. I, this is the first time I've ever done this this year. Uh, even though people recommended it for years to me, and I am super happy because for educational purposes, there's nothing better. Go play, have fun. All right. Uh, that should be the end of that video. Uh, I am going to take a, a little bit of a five minute break and make some coffee. And, and I'll come back. You guys have plenty to play with, right? You're playing with those images. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do my. We're gonna do a video about my container next. That's the next one. If you guys want to start downloading my container right now, 
Uh, it's exactly the same command. The only thing you have to do differently right here is do rwx rob slash workspace. All right, it's a big one. It's like 1.08 gig or something like that. You got your head for Cbook today. Nice. Um, uh, so if if you want to, it's going to take a while to download that one. So if you want to go ahead and do it ahead of the video, uh, you can go play with a container that I just barely finished, literally 30 minutes before the boost started. So don't judge me. <laughs> I've been working on it for a while. It's got little quirks in there, but the fish work. Make sure you check the fish. I'll be back in a bit.
Alright, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? I got like a minute left to drink this coffee a little bit. Everybody find it? Yeah, it's uh, RDBX Rob Workspace. So it would be this. But we're going to make a video on it right now. All right. Uh, <laughs> PMT, I saw your post. I'm so sorry. I got saved for time and all eternity. I people, I I I I meant to chop out the videos and have that thrown away. And I guess I could probably go in there and edit that one out a little bit someplace if you want. I can skip it when it comes time to editing. Um. So yeah, just just to, just a warning to everybody going forward. Anything that you say on my stream, uh, I might say that I'm going to delete it, but it might make it out there anyway on accident, despite what I my best intentions. So it's probably best that you not trust me and you just. Don't put anything in the chat that you don't want everyone to see. <laughs> I think we were having fun with the exclamation point. I think everybody will forgive us if that's the case. All right, let's go. Uh, about something so monolithic. It is pretty damn monolithic. I know. It is not the okay, case. So, yeah. Uh, it would bring all the views. We've talked about that, but... Yeah, if you if you want to backjack stuff, that stuff uh, uh, in in the VOD replays on Twitch, I think they can still see it, but that's the only place. And I do delete the Twitch vods. Uh, well, they die after sixty days anyway, right? But I I I don't delete the I I, I keep the Twitch vods around to um, until they expire out, and then YouTube backs me up. Yeah, anyway. So, what's next? Anybody else got questions? Thanks for the follow. Uh, lots of fun stuff. Um, so, so another video. We're going to do another video. Uh, this video is about uh, running Rob's workspace Linux container. Um how I managed to incorporate Vim into the shell itself so you can see what you have programmed. Uh, how did I manage to incorporate Vim into the shell itself so you can see what you have programmed? Dash dash RM. Two dashes. Uh, but is an image... Yes. Yes. So uh, that's a good question. So let's answer that before we go on. Um... I use Tmux for that group punk. That's what I'm doing for everything. I use, it's a Tmux. We're going to learn all of that over the next few days in the boost. Actually, the next few weeks. Um, so let me let me answer that question about images and containers. So go back yesterday, and there, there was a discussion about the difference between a container and an image. And this is a good example of the difference. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about this more later tonight when we do if we have time. We're gonna talk more about uh, all the commands and the commands for you to show all the things that are running and the LS and all that. So that's coming, but I just wanna tell you in advance since you asked that uh, an image is exactly equivalent to a dormant program that's not running. And when you, and when you do Docker run, that takes that dormant program and runs it, puts it into memory, but in addition to it, it also, the difference is, is that when you disconnect from it, unless you have RM, it, 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 when you do dash dash RM, it deletes the process from memory. Uh, Docker breaks from the comparison of a program in that, it, you know, the image is the raw thing. The container is the running version, but that container may be active in memory and actually started. It's called, it's called started instead of running. I know it's crazy. Uh, and then, I'm sorry for the size of it, but it's, you know, it's a full Linux distro, pretty much everything inside. And so, so, but a container, when you do Docker run on a container, it creates an instance of the image and everything you do inside of there gets saved. And even if that container gets paused or stopped, whatever one you prefer, it's still the same. It's still got the same stuff in there. The difference is, is that it's all been written to disk and it's not using your CPU anymore. This is a kind of the same thing as putting your putting your program to sleep, kind of. You're kind of you can think of it as like putting your if you're thinking about an image as a pro a dormant program that hasn't been run yet, and you think about you know a running process as equivalent to a container that's been started, then you can kind of think of you know stopped or paused containers as as you know 
programs that have been put to sleep and written to disk, and then they get bought back up again, and then they wake up. So that's what's going, that's what's going on now. Uh, control L doesn't work because <laughs> it's not to default. Oh, oh no. Yeah, you can set Control L doesn't work because Control L is a set as a set uh, as a is a is a an inferior uh, Emacs set dash o Emacs. Sir John, if you want it, just do set space dash o space Emacs. And we're gonna put all we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk all about that right now. And a big fight with that, uh, with, uh, what's his face? I forget his name. He's not here anymore. Uh, about, cause it's the default. Emacs is the default, uh, for bash because Stallman. <laughs> uh, so the image, the image is a blueprint and the container is an instance of the blueprint. Sort of. It's, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 it's all of it. it. It really is more like a program. So let's say you compile a program, right? That program is sitting there on disk. It's not doing anything. And when you run the program, it gets put into memory and it creates a process ID and you can watch it and everything. And it's, you know, doing stuff and talking to the internet and your file system. And then, and then it, when it stops, it goes away and it gets thrown away, right? Yeah, it's exactly the same process for a container. Okay, an image is sitting here. It's like the dormant. And then you, you start, you run the container, the image, and then it, it makes an instance of the program, which is running, which has its own memory. It talks and say, the difference is, is that when you can then stop it and then it goes like this and it saves its current state to disk. So there's a, there's the original image over here, but now there's a, a current hibernating, you know, instance of that running thing that's not doing anything until you start it again. You start it, it comes back here and it keeps working. And in that sense... Uh, it's very much like a VM, you know, a virtual machine where you can pause, you can, you can put a virtual machine to sleep. You can have, you can be running Linux on windows, for example, and you can click a thing and you can make the whole thing go to sleep. And it's as if somebody made your, your computer sleeping, the sleep, the idea of sleeping, uh, from machines has really become prevalent everywhere, right? Because a container is, is just basically just a bunch of programs that have been put to sleep and their memory state and everything has been, it been saved to disk. So it's pretty cool stuff. I mean, you got to admit, I, I think it's pretty cool. Mm. Uh, I don't know if it's exactly the equivalent to a virtual machine, which actually writes literally byte for byte what's in the memory. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think containers do that, but all right, let's make another video. Um, it's true that there is no way to migrate changes from one container back to the image that was created. No, that's called ephemeral. Okay. So, but you can commit it and that's what we're going to do all boost long. We're going to use, we're, we haven't learned it yet. We're kind of jumping ahead. I'm, I'm glad that you have all these same questions uh, early on. Yeah, but it's, it's not what's happening, but uh, if you minutes, it's pretty crazy. Uh, have your workspace on locally under a few minutes is pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You can have your workspace anywhere. But, you, but the best thing you can, I can do is that I can actually configure this workspace uh, I can mount specific things from my work, so they have. I'm work at work, and another place I'm something else. I have completely different accounts and everything. So um, yeah, in the main system, does have limitations. Um, anything that can be run on the computer can be emulated. Anything. So yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's just it's just Docker commit. That's it. It's literally that's all it is, Brillin. You just, you just, we're going to get to it, but it's literally just Docker commit name of image, name of container. And it turns your container, your running container, it turns it into an image. And I don't want to confuse everybody, but it turns it into an image. You can actually even push it and publish it that way. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to get way into that. All right. So let's, let's, as you guys are having fun, that's fine. Let's, let's do the fun stuff. But I, I need to make sure to, to describe uh, what we're doing here. Then you can inspect uh, or untar Alpine. Really? Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't even thought about that. But yeah, Tanya was definitely the person to talk about this. He's he's the man and woman or whatever. I, as I said many times, I do not. You don't have to tell me. Uh, all the layers in the manifest. Really? Wow. Yeah. So that's the guts of it. If you really want to get into it, it's, it's pretty amazing technology, but we're beginners. So, um, so, so, so let's do the next thing. Uh, run. <laughs> Uh, run Rob's uh, workspace. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird. Uh, uh, 
Okay. Run, Rob, run. Um, did I have a trouble? I know. I hate that. I probably should have done Did I have a run Rob's workspace container? Did I say it? Uh, I'd probably say run Rob's workspace. Run, Rob, run. Damn it. <laughs> okay. All right. So here comes another video. So be on your best behavior. Um, class. <laughs> That's funny to me because I don't, I don't, it, you just need to know me. If I refer to grades or the classroom, it's because I'm making a joke. Um, I have a workspace. That's right. And we just got done talking about containers. And right at 8 o'clock tonight, uh, May the 12th, so about an hour before uh, now, about a half an hour before the boost started, I actually finished my first workspace container. Uh, and I've got tweaks on it I probably have to do, but I went ahead and gave it a 1.0. What does that mean? Well, don't watch this video at all unless you have Docker running and you've got you've got you've played around with a couple of different operating uh, Linux operating systems. I got videos on that. Go back and look at those. If you haven't done that, don't watch this unless you want to. And then watch it, but you'll be lost. Okay, so this is what you do to run the workspace. Uh, now it's going to take you a long time to run. Do you dare me to download the whole thing? Should we sit here and watch it, talk about it while I download it? Yeah, I, I don't know. I almost don't dare to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I'm going to pretend like pretend like you can't see how long this is going to take. <laughs> it's going to take a long time because I broke a lot of container rules. And we're going to talk about why I broke those rules for good reasons. Uh, so I'm going to remove uh, RWX uh, ROM slash... Uh, workspace. Don't you do that. Don't, none of you do that. Um, and don't you do that. If you guys just downloaded it, don't follow along with me here. You're going to really be sad. Oh gosh. <laughs> Look at all those overlays. Tony, by the way, I need to talk to you later about squashing my, my run. I deliberately left runs in there. So it didn't take me all day to build because I needed the overlays. So I'm speaking to our advanced container person here for a second. Um, if you, Tiny while since you're here, since I'm I'm just gonna mention it. If if you if you've got an experimental version of Docker with squash, I would really love it to get rid of all these overlays. And what are overlays? I know I'm getting into the deep weeds on this. The way Docker works is that when you build up a container, you build up all the little pieces of the container de declaratively, and they're called overlays, and they all get put into one big thing, kind of like a Matroshka doll. And uh, yeah, I guess I could try that. Anyway. I, I wasn't going to say, yeah. So so it's kind of big. And so I'm just telling you this. I'm To the container people out there, to the professional DevOps container, cognitive people out there, do not judge me. I'm telling you right now, I have a purpose for this. It's for education and it's so that I have a really quick workspace and I bloated the crap out of it and I didn't optimize my runs and I did a bunch of other stuff that was just, it's just unheard of. I even put a big old comment in there. Don't judge me. I'm doing this for these reasons. And so I'm going to say that before I do this, because what I'm about to do is going to be very embarrassing because it's going to take a long time to download. And it, it, what, 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 what was our vote? We had a, we had a pot going. We had a, we had a, we had a kind of a bet going about how big the container was going to come in while I was building it. Anybody know? What's your, what's your guess? Okay. So, uh, and we're going to, we're about to find out. So Docker, uh, run, we talked about that already. Uh, an IT is it two gig? Oh God! <laughs> For a container that's huge, you got to consider this has pretty much everything from an, a Unix operating system that I would use without the graphics, and you don't need the graphics because I can use the graphics from the host. Uh, wow, really? Uh, you must have been sharing some stuff. Yeah, I think you must have been sharing. You must have been sharing another image. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get it. So I'm gonna do RM here, dash dash RM because I'm gonna throw this one away. And RDBX Rob slash uh, workspace. And it's going to pull all of this stuff down. It's going to take a long time and we can drink our coffee. I need more coffee anyway. Three gig? I can't. Is it three gig? Oh, that's even more embarrassing. 
It's going to take a while to download. Uh, why is there a Poma tomato beside the clock? Well, that's a good thing you asked that because we've got time. Let me get my coffee and come back. All right. Oh, it was the right path. All right. So let me just say, uh, let me just say, oh, okay. Yeah, let's go look at this while we're waiting. Open link. Um, yep, there we go. So let me just say that when you're dealing with images, I mean, go look at the Ubuntu image. How big is the Ubuntu image? All right. So while this is happening, you can get the entire Alpine Linux distro in under two megabytes, I think. What is it? Does anybody have it? Who has it? Let's go see. Five megabytes. Okay. So when we're talking about container, okay, Ubuntu's, Ubuntu is one of the fattest ones. Seriously. Ubuntu is like the fattest Linux container out there. And we're not, we're not going to talk about BusyBox. BusyBox is under 1.2 megabytes. It fits on a floppy drive. That's why it's the number one pick. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It's actual Ubuntu. So Ubuntu, how big is Ubuntu? Let's go check. Now, the size of an image, why does the size matter, right? We might as well talk about that while we're waiting for this. But the size, in this case, size does matter because the smaller, the better, because you are going to be deploying these things all over in your infrastructure. You don't want to bloat them out with extra stuff. And I actually really, really love this about cloud native in general, the whole industry, because they're once again concerned with keeping things efficient. You know, with these big old desktops, people throw all sorts of crap out there. And you know, mobile computing and development actually also did the same thing. It pushed people to care about how long it took to load pages and stuff. And <laughs> but when you're talking about, um, you know, when, when you're talking about a container and you're talking about toy boxes for 440k. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, I have not seen that one yet. I did not. I have not seen toy box yet. So busy, busy box is the smallest one that I knew about. And it is even tighter. It was, it's an originally, it's not even really a true Linux system. It's more of a, a program that runs in multi-call mode, which means all of it's been built into this little program. Um, but so, so you, you want small containers and that's why I'm so embarrassed by a three gigabyte container. But the reason that this is a three gigabyte container is because this is something uh, a Cypheric he left Cypheric left, but he gave us the name COD, Container Oriented Developer uh, Deployment or Developer Desktop. So the, I'm okay with my entire workspace, everything I need to do my job every day, taking three gigabytes. How much, how much size does your, does your entire favorite distro take to install onto a computer? Hmm? Hmm? How much size does that take? I guarantee you it's way bigger than three gigabytes. I mean, three gigabytes is, that's the fattest container I've ever found. <laughs> My container's fat. <laughs> but, but you know, it's like, uh, eight, eight, have you seen an eight gigabyte one? Okay, so, oh, I take that back. I take that back. Domino, you guys know about Domino? Domino, uh, machine learning we, we actually were talking about this the other day maybe it's not it's not arch alex it's not uh so so it's still downloading this i'm trying to tell you it's going to take you a while to download unless you're on really fast internet um but again this it's not fair to compare what we're doing now with this download with downloading the ubuntu or the BusyBox container it doesn't have anything on it this is a container that's been loaded to the gills with everything i use for development it's deliberately bloated. So I know it's going to take me longer, but it still takes me less time than downloading and installing. Like, like you can maybe get a USB stick to install Ubuntu or Arch or something, right? But then you have to sit there and wait for the network download, and it takes way longer than this. So this is still faster. And by the way, I can use this, I can use this workspace anywhere that has Docker or a container engine runtime. So like I can I can be on my neighbor's Windows machine. I don't know why I would be, but I could be, and I could 
I could put Docker on there and download my workspace and start working immediately because all my source code's in GitHub and I just have to get a connection to work and I'm done, I'm done, good to go. If my, if my laptop were to fall in the toilet, I don't know why that would be, but if it did, then it would be completely replaceable instantly. I just get on another computer and pull down my workspace and I'm working, working, everything, including my fish. <laughs> so there's like everything in there. Uh, and you can redirect your graphics. Yes, you can. You put them in X. If you don't, I, I referred to this in the last video. Uh, again, if you're if you're interested in how you would do the graphic part of this, make sure you go watch the Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka, and remember that Willy Wonka video from Jess Frazzle, uh, F R A Z E L L, um, and the fish can swim in the toilet. They could. That got really weird. It's actually more likely it would be in the bathtub because I a fond, I am a fan of taking a nice warm bath. Yes, I am. And I have bonbons and I read my book in there and I make the bubbles. I don't have bubbles. I probably should have bubbles. Anyway, weird. I didn't I didn't mean to go there. <laughs> it's a great place to rubber duck. Get it? That's, that's a joke that no one's gonna laugh at. They're like groan, groan. They got it though. You they got it. Just at least Is that the Jess Frazzle video? Yeah. All right, so I was, I was actually slamming on Domino. So this machine learning Domino application right here, uh, this Domino application, 80 gigabyte container. 80 gigabytes. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> 80 gigabytes, but it has everything in it. I mean, it's got everything in it, man. This is like, it's weird to think of this thing as an app. You know, it's not an app. It's an 80 gigabyte app. Uh, it's fine as long as you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, well, that would be me. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> hey, look, it's almost downloaded. I mean, that wasn't too bad. It was only like five or 10 minutes. Small as soon as I've seen it is 128 bytes large. You know, I thought... I. Th Tony, well, I I did the smallest Hello World. I was going to try a compiled Rust program. We did we did Hello World in Rust, and that was even smaller. So so you guys, just so you know, what we're geeking out on. You can make containers that don't have an operating system in them. Well, they technically they use the underlying operating. So like you can make a Hello World in Go, and you cannot get below. Uh, I think it's a a a hundred and twenty eight bytes. Yeah. Because Go has a, a minimum size. LS doesn't work? What are you talking about? Well, look, it's the first draft, so there's going to be bugs. You guys are going to find bugs. I just barely finished it, and, and that's we're going to work out the bugs and find them and everything. But at least you just have somebody to work on, something to work with. LS-LA. Are you trying to do LL? I don't have any of that stuff. This is my personal workspace you're dealing with here. That means if you don't like everything with set dash vi and you don't like dash la or you like all those stupid ls alternatives, which I hate, um, uh, yeah, just Docker push. Actually, Alex, I'm glad you asked that. So I haven't set it up yet, but with GitHub Actions, any commit, any commit to that GitHub thing will trigger. I can trigger a push. I can trigger a, a an image push now that I have Docker files in there. People do this all the time. It's part of the DevOps cycle. Part of the DevOps cycle, they'll do. In fact, developer shops do this all the time because they want every all the developers to have the exactly the same development environment. Uh, you could use yeah. You just do it's Docker space push. Yeah. <laughs> VMT. Um, uh, just made a zero byte container. What? Of course you did. Um, it's still, it's almost there. So you can make it, you can make it. So, so some of the questions, well, how do you keep this updated? Actually, uh, you started using Podman. I will never play with Podman. No, I'm a bad, avid. I, I do not want Podman to win. The Podman requires you to use systemd and doesn't work on anything but Linux machines. Uh, Docker works on Mac. Uh, Windows and has an independent Docker daemon uh, that doesn't require systemd. So I, I'm not against systemd. I just am against forcing people to use Red Hat because Podman and OpenShift are 
you know, hand to hand. There, that's a huge debate right now. And I've heard, I've had somebody come up and say to me, Podman's going to win, just get over it. And I, my SME actually at work, he, you know, he's not on this particular account and the account that I'm on, they completely disagree and they want Docker for everything. So, and there's other, there's other contenders there. So as well. Uh, and people usually, if, you, if you, okay, this is supposed to be for beginners. So I'm sorry, we were just filling the time, the time while we're waiting. Podman for the beginners out there is an alternative to Docker uh, that does everything Docker does. Uh, this the beginning of this year it got a lot of press because uh, it does Docker Compose now. But uh, you guys don't need to know about that right now. Uh, I don't like it. I, I don't like it for several reasons, but I, I I like Docker for beginners in particular because it's so much easier for them to get started with. Uh, and it is the standard. It was the first that did it. I mean, it was the first that got accepted as doing it. Uh, Three-gig container doesn't like systemd. Yeah, that's me. I don't I, Look, I don't want to force a dependency on anything. I didn't say I didn't like systemd. That's not what I said. I said I don't want to force a dependency on systemd. And that's what Podman does. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was it's kind of like NeoVim and Vim. NeoVim kind of forced Vim to do the right thing and now you don't need it anymore. You really don't need it. Um but you know, you can use it if you want. Um and so that's what's going on there. Um uh hidden files uh when you log into the container LA list uh, but yeah. Uh so you guys uh a lot of you are confused about my workspace shell and you're like this isn't working like the one that I have over here and that's because I've customized my workspace for me. And at this boost in fact starting tomorrow we're going to start customizing your you're going to build the workspace is just for you to 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 fail out to if you want to use my workspace. But the real goal of the next week of the boost is for you to build your own container step by step as you go at your own Linux distribution. If you want to build it in Arch, fine. If you want Suzy, fine. I'm only going to cover building out an Ubuntu one because that's what I know and I'm good at and I practice it. It's the most common. It's the most likely to get you a job. But you can do whatever you want. If you want to build a Red Hat container, fine. The point here is the containers give you choice. And you'll be if you want to have crazy LL aliases to everything, fine. I hate them. And that's what's really great about, about Linux in general is that you can you can customize it infinitely. Uh, now, you got to be careful because some of the customization, particularly in, in Ubuntu, but some of the customizations that come on Ubuntu are not standard. I mean, some of the things that come standard on Ubuntu for a user like LL are not standard Unix commands. You know, you should at least learn the other command before you do it. Hey, look, it ran it. Okay, now, when you run this... this um, uh, can do better than you by virtue of being dead. <laughs> it's not suitable for live streams. Um, all right, so 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 here we go. We have uh, we're now looking at a completed thing. It downloaded all of it and it ran it. Uh, and now what it's prompting me for, and this is the end of this will be the end of this video. Uh, uh, so so here we have the default user is you if you can change the user to whatever you want it doesn't matter but i set up these defaults the reason i have it prompt for username is because on on the account that i have now believe it or not my username worst username i have had in history i've had robma i've had r-m-u-h-l-e-s-t i've had rdbx rob i've had all the sorts of different ones but for some reason this company that shall not be named gave me the short name r-m-u-h-l-e-s-t I'm not doxing myself to give you that, but sound that thing out. Do you have any idea how embarrassing? <laughs> I have to tell a short story here with my five minutes left. This is, they randomly gave me this name. It's like the worst name in history. I'm like the laughing stock of the team now. I know. I'm like, can I please change it with HR? I, I should, I should probably do that, but it's like embedded in everything now. So I, that's why I put a username there so I can change it to something else. You know, like I could put some like cool guy, you know, uh, or Taniwa or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, so, so I have to tell you a quick story with my five minutes here. Um, I was actually, this is a true story. I was in the DMV in downtown Charlotte. Um, was it Charlotte? Yeah. And I, I thought it would be faster to get through that one. So I went down to... I had to sit in a waiting room for like a half an hour or something, right? And <laughs> and and they actually changed it to nickel. Yeah, they 
somebody over the over the over my actual name is this no no it's no secret uh and so imagine pronouncing that right so so that over the pa while i'm sitting there there's at least 50 to 80 people in the room and it's huge room it's an auditorium booming you know thing with like multiple lines and the, the, the over the mic they said what would rob molesting please come your driver's license is ready rob molesting rob molesting <laughs> that's a true story and i was like oh my god and i had to walk i had to stand up i had to stand up i did i had to stand up I'm like, oh, walk of shame like all the way to the thing and they're all looking at me like what's this guy's name like go change your name dude why didn't you got the dmv why didn't you go down the street and get your name changed <laughs> It's actually Mulstein. Mulstein. It means millstone. Lest you be, you had the real Rob Mulstein. Mulstein, the way people say it. Uh, actually, when I, I used to be embarrassed about my name, and I'm over fifty now, I don't care. Like I, I go in to talk to people, and they struggle with my name. It's like ah, Rob. It's, it's Mulstein. They're like, what? Mulstein. I don't. I don't even apologize anymore. It's like when I was a kid, I was like, I'm so sorry. I know it's hard to say, and it's kind of weird. I'm like, it's Mulstein. Say it right. Or don't say it. <laughs> True story. So 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 yeah. And then and then along comes Bueller. I know. Mulstein. Mulstein. It means millstone. Anyway. So, but yeah, first day on the job. Mulstein. Mulstein. Mul Mulstein. I think it actually had an umlaut at one point. I don't know. But uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so I'm R molest. Are molest. That's that's what people call me in, in my team meetings. Anyway, so I actually had to make it so that I could change my name to Armolest so that I could work. So and I of course my user ID is nine, over nine thousand. See what I did there? Now it, by default, you know what the user ID usually is? Just a thousand. So that's usually what it is. And this is important, by the way. If you're using a container and you've mounted file systems and you need to work with them, getting these things right is super important. Um, so I'm going to do a thousand, a thousand on that. Oh, you found it. Where could you go? So, and you actually have to make your home directory coincide. I could probably make that smarter, but whatever. So, and I want bin bash. I could do Z shell, but it didn't work because I have a bug, but you could actually change it to just plain old shell. You could even install TC shell and it'll work. Um, uh, but I'm going to stick with bash for now. So this actually starts up, starts up the container. And there you go. Now, it didn't change the host name. That's a different thing. Uh, and we will get to that. It's an extra command you have to provide when you run the container, not when you set it up. Uh, uh, can go snooping in your container? Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm just I'm just showing what you can do because I wanted to show you. But if but if you just you can just accept the defaults for fine and then throw it away, right? By the way, this this is not going to live beyond this second because I told it to RM when I'm done with it. So when it means when I'm done with it, it's going to chuck it. It's going to throw it away. The image will still be there, so it doesn't have to download it again. But you know, it's still going to be there, right? So I can run my fish over here. It took me a long time to get the fish to run. Uh, you know, Vim is on here. Uh, is set dash OVI as a default. So forget about your dash L. If you, by the way, if you want, if you want Emacs mode, you can do Emacs uh, set dash O Emacs if you must, and and then your 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 control L will work. Whatever that is, I don't use control L. I think it's silly, but whatever. And you can use the arrows for I don't know. I I I don't know that, and I hate it. I've never learned it. I've used set dash OVI since day one of Unix. I never ever learned Emacs mode for the history thing. Thank God. I'm Emacs. I've Emacs all the things. I have one minute left to finish, you know, bantering and talking about this 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 container. But you now have the container. You can do SL. I put a couple toys in there, you know, fun things like with that. Uh, I didn't put C matrix on there because it had an interactive thing that it couldn't do. Plus, T matrix is so much cooler. So I'm going to get you T matrix on there eventually. Uh, it doesn't have Z doesn't work over here because it doesn't have your knowledge directory set. But it has all the other tools that that I use. And by the way, those tools are all in uh, dot bin. Let's see, local. 
uh, slash bin CD scripts. So yeah, all of the scripts that I use for my dot files. So, you know, uh, you can go look inside uh, of all of these things. You can see all the code in there if you want. So obviously you could have done that just from my GitHub. But if you want to actually go in here and mess with them, all right. So, so for example, I have, I think I have banner in here, uh, unable to open a font file. What? Oh boy. Got to fix that one. Got a bug in there still. I'll have to fix him. Some of the scripts aren't working. I just barely finished it today. So I have to, you know, there's going to be a little tweaking here and there. If you find something that's not working on that repo, please open an issue. Okay. Can I show you how to do that? That'll be the last thing I'm going to do today. Uh, it's going to take me time to, to get a full blown standalone image completely perfect uh, with all of its little bugs ironed out. Uh, but then when we have it, everybody can just jump in and you know do it anytime. But if you do find a, a bug, like a, like a bug bug, uh, it, it's an opportunity for you to actually, you get green star container credit for providing uh, issues. So like if you, uh, if you go to uh, github.com uh, slash rwx slash workspace, uh, and if you see uh, an issue on anything here in your container, uh, you can click on uh, issues uh, and you can say new issue. Yeah, I put an issue there for Team Matrix, okay? So please do this. I encourage you to do this. Um, if, if you're a beginner, then there's no better way for you to practice with issues and threads than a very forgiving you know, beginner boost environment like this. If you go to start issues and deal with threads and other open source people who are much more grumpy and and underpaid and overworked and <laughs> working on open source projects, they might rip your head off. I, I, I rip people's head off too, don't get me wrong. But but this is a really friendly space for you to submit issues. And plus it would really help me. So if you find any problem with this workspace that you don't like, or if you have a suggestion about an extra tool that would be nice to have in there, for example, Nmap was not in there before and I was reminded sort of by it. I'm like, oh, we should probably put Nmap in there. You know, things like that. If there's a tool that's missing that you use all the time that I might have just forgotten that I definitely use all the time, please let me know and I'll just go add it to the Docker file. And uh, so I'm gonna end on this note. We're gonna do a whole video on, on this, but the way that you make your own, there's two ways to make your own uh, container slash image, strictly speaking, an image. Uh, the one way is to write a Docker file and run build. That's what this is. This is a Docker file. It's almost its own language. This is why you need to learn shell, by the way, because all of this code is in shell. Right? I don't expect you... We're not going to do any Docker file deep dive during the boost, uh, but it will continue to come up, and, and I think we'll probably use it for some of that. Uh, this, by the way, just so you know, the reason I don't want to show this to you, this number of runs like this is an anti-pattern in... in in tight containers. If you're going to make a really tiny non-bloated container, you would put all of that into a single command. Uh, and the fewer the commands, the better. And that's where squashing comes in. So I'm kind of going over time. But so, but if you're interested in Docker files, you know, hang tight. And we will get to there. Or talk to us. I'm working on Docker files all day, every day, pretty much. So uh, if you have a question and you want to come in, we're not during the beginner boost. But the beginners, don't get overwhelmed if you don't know what the Docker file is. The other way to make a container is to save an image and we're gonna, I'm going to save that for an entire video. Uh, I'll just give you a quick one here, though. So uh, once you once you have an image, uh, a container, you can do, well, I'll save it. It's just too hard. This was going to get thrown away as soon as I exit. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you. The question stuff is on there, too. So if you want to look for stuff, you can put the question mark and say, uh, I don't know, what should we say? Uh, container over image or something like that. You see this? And it's space to go through and do that. That is all working. It's all set up to do that. If you want to search on Google, put two question marks. Okay. If you want to search Bing, three question marks. Okay. Uh, first thing you tried. So that stuff is all there. And one of the reasons I wanted to put that in the workspace and show you about it is I want to, as quickly as possible to help train you to search for those things. Uh, at least in a similar fashion to how I do using a text browser. And if you want to use links, you can use this one. Um, if you just want links, there's a repo with just links in it too, so you don't have to use the whole workspace. But you can also emulate whatever's there and copy it. The, the really great thing about this is you can go pick and choose the stuff out of there that you don't want. In fact, when you get good, you can actually fork this workspace 
and alter this file and alter it and add your own stuff there and then just publish your own container. You can make your own workspace. So this is all stuff to come. We still have to learn how to edit files. We have to learn how to navigate the command line. We have to learn how to use Docker. What are the primary Docker commands besides run? And and that's all coming. Uh, we have one half hour left. So we're going to do the Docker commands in the next video. All right. Okay, so... Uh, Oh, I just have to stop talking for a second. <laughs> it's hard for me to stop talking. I just, I can't stop. I just talk and talk and talk. We fought with fonts today too. That was a thing. Yeah, here's, there's the Ubuntu nerd font. <clears throat> what is that? Oh, that, that's the thing that I was, that's the telling well, there's fix you ID I was looking at. The source code of that. It's pretty basic stuff. Good stuff, though. Yep. Um, what else we got? That's it. All right. Give me five minutes here, and we'll do... Oh, God. Did I kill my five-minute timer? Oh, I'm still in here. I thought I had that fixed. I swear to God, I thought I had that fixed. I guess not. I have to fix it. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Two is Google, three is Bing. So, you liking those? Yeah. Yep. No. In fact, if you make an alias for it, yeah, just push your up arrow, get your history and try it again and it'll just pop right up because it's downloaded the whole image and cached it. My host OS, uh, Pop OS. It doesn't matter. Actually, I'm glad you asked that because that's one of the videos we need to do before I leave. Mm -hmm. You can use type. You can use aliases. Um, yeah. And um, what else? Lots of stuff there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Rob's workspace. Uh, a Docker inside Docker. You can totally do it. Yeah. Maluba, if, you, if you're going to do Docker inside Docker, we're going to actually... I, that's probably going to be an, a side video that's not going to be in the boost that I'm going to do. If if you want to know how to do that uh, to any font... Oh, wow. That's cool, too. Did not know that. Hmm. That's really cool. Uh, if you want to do Docker inside Docker, all you have to do is run here. I'm going to show you since we're on break still. Okay. So where's my run, right? Watch. This is it. This is all you need to run Docker inside Docker. Uh, you mount dash V var. I thought it was going to be way harder than this. It's not a Docker dot sock. This is why you have WSL in windows because you can't do this with this pathing unless you have sort of a unix -y windows like WSL. If you try to do this from like, you know, backslashes, it's just, you know, <laughs> just, just be a pain in the butt. var run docker.sock. This says, that I love Unix because it does everything through sockets. So by doing this, oh, it's going to yell at me because I have it. It's supposed to come first. Um, I wonder, I wonder, is this going to work? Yep, yeah, there we go. So, I could have done that faster, but... So, here, I can run all of these things again, right? Uh, now watch. So, now I can do Docker PS. You see that? <laughs> That's a container that can see my Docker registries from my host system. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Everything else is set up. So, and what it does is, so your containers, you know what else is cool? Watch this. Run top, guys. You see this? Look, this is top. 
This is running top off of the entire operating system, including the host OS. If you were to do this in a VM, it would not show this. It would show like one CPU versus all and stuff. Uh, that's it. Yep. That's all you have to do. The only thing you have to do is to do Docker within a Docker. I mean, God bless containers, right? The only thing you have to do is it's called a bind mount. There's different, there's volume mounts too. It's a bind mount, which is the most common. And you just bind mount the socket, the socket to the socket. And if you do this, then, then the socket that's inside of your container is physically the same. Now, you know, I actually had to prepare this though, because if you, uh, Oh boy. Uh, let, me get, let me get back here. I, I had to prepare this though because shoot. Oh, is it already still? Is it? Is it? Is it? Did I not delete the other one? What did I do? What have I done? Um. Uh, all right. Well. So what I was gonna say is you can, you have to you have to make sure you get your permissions right if you're gonna do your own. What? Permission denied. Oh my gosh. I know what I think happened. <laughs> you saw it here, folks. I actually, my container, when I when you run my container, it actually schmodded my socket. <laughs> All right, that's a bug. Don't do that yet. <laughs> because it schmodded the socket after it had been mounted, which means that it did it after it was mounted, which means that my host system socket has got the wrong permissions on it. And that's what I was about to tell you. You have to have the right permissions on the socket. Because you're, you're, you won't be able to read it. You'll have different user IDs, which is why I was being such a stickler about coming up with these. But watch. So my this is going to be broken. So my var run docker.sock is going to be a different permission that I can't read now. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's totally dead. I probably killed it. Oh, I hope I didn't kill it. Was it the RM that did it? I don't know. We'll go find out. Uh, but that's all it is. So I just have to get my socket back. I think my Docker is probably down. No, it's not. Oh, did I have a typo? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, God. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that was it. System T Cordum <laughs> is the user. You know why? Yeah, you know what that is? That's probably 9001. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the reason it did that is because in my entry point, I changed the ID. I have to fix that. I need to fix that like right away because I'm going to use this tomorrow. Uh, all it did is it just made it. So I tried to make it the Docker ID. The problem is, is that the Docker ID is a different ID. Watch. So if I get, if I Etsy password Docker in here, uh, no, Etsy groups. Let's see, group. There we go. So Docker is 131 on this. And uh, yeah, so that's that's what's up. So I, I, I can fix it really quick. But I, yeah, 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 I mean, uh, sudo, let's see, sudo ch group. So you just have to change the socket to be the Docker group. But they have, or either that or you have to expand the permissions. I mean, if you don't care, you can do this. You can do uh, sudo, uh, let's see, schmod. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's one of the ones, yeah. So so schmod, um, actually, she group, docker, var run, docker.sock. And that wants my super secret password, which you can't see. Nothing fancy here. Uh, 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 I wish I could type. That's the problem from having a really long passphrase. <laughs> you have to remember the thing. Uh, that should do it. All right. So Docker PS, let me check. Huzzah. It works. So, so I have a bug. 
I have a bug. There's definitely a bug in there. So uh, the reason for that, by the way, is because it it tries to change. It tries to change. It, it makes this socket darker. And then because it's bound, it actually changes the permission on the host one as well. And that's what got me in trouble. So. Yeah, don't be worried. All this stuff that we were just doing has nothing to do with any beginner stuff. I'm still on break, sort of. Yeah, the only reason I did any of that is to do Docker inside Docker, and nobody in the beginner boost should be worried about that right now. All right. Has a great character arc. <laughs> mm. So, um, so, so, so. So what are we going to do next? Well, uh, we have 20 minutes left. I can do one more video and let's do the initial Docker commands. Okay. So let's, let's actually do that. Uh, oh, uh, I mean, I don't think I need to tell you why the distro doesn't matter as much, uh, in a containerless world. We actually covered that pretty well yesterday. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah. Let's do that right there. I mean, we already covered it. So, I mean, yeah. We did Ubuntu. Uh, we did, what was the other one? We did Fedora. We did, uh, uh, what, what, which one was it? We did them all, right? We did Arch Linux. Was it Open Suzy? Uh, we even did, we almost got Nim to work. Didn't we get Nim to work? Nim, it was Nim, what was it? Was it NixOS? Was it NixOS slash Nim? I think I'll remember that one. Uh, Docker. What was it? It was NixOS slash Nim, I think. No? What was it? What was it? I want to make a run that actually gets them all. Oh, it's 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 just plain old NixOS. No, NixOS Nix. Ah, okay. Thank you. There you go. There's your Nix. So NixOS Nix. Give it a shot. Um. So yeah, I mean that's that's it. Uh. So that that covers that. We don't need a video. Not. I mean, you guys got the point. I think. I mean, it's oh Cali. We didn't do Cali. God damn it. Got to do Cali. All those Cali fans. Um. Oh, what is it? Uh, let's. I, I, mean, I mean, we definitely have to have every every possible Linux distro. On. I mean, that's the main, the main gist of today. So, uh, so Cali. I know Cali's over here. Yeah, there's a containerized Cali. Uber Hacker. Yes. Um, Cali rolling. There you go. Uh, Cali Linux. It's not, there, apparently there's not just a plain old Cali. No, there's not. You have to do Cali Linux slash rolling. Which means that you trust them. Did I screw up my thing again? <laughs> I think I did. I did. I, I, I screwed up my nice socket again. I'm so sorry. Uh, var docker Okay, so don't get. If you're still stick with me, I just have to get the rest of these on here. I'll run uh, Linux. I can't do my, my commands because I broke them. Doc, uh, docs, docker dot sock. What? Hmm. Oh, I must. I must not be. Hmm. Why is it doing that? Is it rolling? I, I want to get Cali because people are always asking me about Cali. So, oh, Cali dash rolling. No wonder. Oh, wait, it's Cali, Cali Linux, Cali dash rolling. Is it the official one? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that would be one. If you're going to hack somebody, go make a Cali Linux image and just wait around. 
<laughs> seriously make a Kali Linux image and wait around for people to to just put your stuff on there and get root access to their system I kid you not because you can get root if you with a little container so <laughs> I shouldn't be saying these things I mean, but very you could somebody's totally gonna do that oh my god look at that prompt oh we have to put that in the video look at that prompt Look at that unnecessarily large prompt. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so glad we did this one. <laughs> it's definitely leet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, watch, it, watch it come with NeoFetch. No, it doesn't. Noise. Hacks are wrong. <laughs> we should have put this one in the video. This has got to go in the video. We got to make this a mandatory one now. If you want to be a hacker, <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if Black Arch is there. Let's try that. Yeah, I mean, come on. We, I mean, this is this is all about Linux distros today. So, so come on. So it's Cali uh, Linux. Cali Linux. Dash Kali dash ruling. That's actually a really good way to use Kali Linux. Uh, because if you use Kali Linux like that, you're you know you're going to get the latest with all the the new Metasploit or whatever in it. That's a, that's actually probably a really one of the better ways to use Kali. Uh, I I I just because there's the hacker in me wants to know. Oh shoot, I did that thing that you're not supposed to do. All right, so. Well, I just have to know. I know I'm burning up all my time here. Uh, we have got to see if there's a black arch. I'm pretty... Yep, yeah, there it is. There it is. Black arch from the official black arch community. No kidding. Look at that. Holy cow. Now I want to play with it. Yep. 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 I mean, that would be fun, don't you think? You got to do your black arch hacksers. Hacksers unite. Uh, black arch. I was actually making my own uh, arch for hacking, but I might just use black arch. It's got all the tools on it. I wonder if it has burp on it. Um, somebody needs to do that research. So I guess I made my point. Whether you want to get one that's got kind on it for Kubernetes development or, or, or hacking and testing and stuff, whether you want to, there's probably one that comes, well, I, I actually know there's one that comes with Minecraft. Yeah, there's one that has the Minecraft server on it ready to go. So if you want to just not deal with installing a Minecraft server, you can go get, there's lots of them that have Minecraft servers. There's actually a win a win point. There's a Windows image. Did you find the Windows image? It you have to access it from. Look at that. Yeah, there's a Windows server. There's the base OS. The the Windows ones you have to. Uh, they actually have Windows 97 out there somewhere too. We tried to play around with that, but yeah, it has, it has to run through your. It's a node thing. So different thing. .NET Core, .NET Framework, Windows Server Core. So, you know, you never know. I mean, it's all there. I mean, I should probably put one in there. I don't even know what I would do with it. Of course, I didn't know what I was doing with the Arch one either. IIS? you got to be kidding me. <laughs> the official source for containers. Uh, IoT Core, Windows Inside. So, it's all there. It's all there. Uh, I'm a little afraid to... This better be appropriate. I'm going to come after you, Riri. Oh, these are containers? 15 seconds to boot. Restore some snapshot. Are these images? Oh, they're not containers? Yeah, that's fun. Well, there you go. There you go. So you can do anything with containers. Um, we have 10 minutes left, and uh, I think I can get through the commands really quick. Um... We already did uh, Don't Worry About Docker File and Compose. I actually talked about that during the break. So we can skip that. Um, uh, generate lots of uh, Black Duck report entries. Oh, do they? What? 
these do? These images? How big are they? Are they are they bigger than mine? <laughs> Inquiring the minds want to know. I don't know. Um, oh, dot net. As long as if they're not official, be careful, right? All right, let's talk about the basic commands. All right, so uh, I'm going to change the topic to uh, <laughs> I just get such a kick out of that Cali prompt. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, that's that's probably the prompt you get when you do try hack me. In fact, I think it's almost exactly that prompt. I know it is. I because I just saw somebody streaming that the other day. Mm. Okie doke. So let's do. Um, uh, la, 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 la. Let's do. Uh, uh, use uh, basic Docker commands. Uh, okay. So. Uh, we have been having way too much fun today, uh, with playing around all the different Linux, Linuxes, Linuxes, uh, lost container size, guess bigly, <laughs> workspace is 2.69 gigabytes. I told you, oh, you were, you were on the, you were one of the ones with the guess, right? 2.9. Somebody guessed 1.2 gig, another one best 100, what was it? 200 megabytes. Uh, we had somebody, uh, who, somebody guessed eight gigabytes. I was like, really? It's bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> that's that's kind of why I want to know how big the Arch Linux or the Cali one is and the Black Arch are, because they're they're likely to be pretty big too. Uh, if they've got everything on there, I mean, they they might not have everything on there, but so anyway, basic Docker commands. Let's get back to that. Uh, and Docker commands. Um, now almost everybody, I'll tell you right now, they alias. Uh, they alias Docker with D, but you're not going to do that right now, okay? And that mine's a subcommand. I'm going to get on it later, so I can do cap completion. You can't complete aliases, by the way. Um, so that's why I have that. Um, you haven't learned any about any of that yet, so don't stress about it. Right now, the only thing you need to worry about is the Docker command. So far, the only command that we've covered has been Docker run. Where's that Cali image again? I'll go run it again. That was fun. Where's that Cali image? All right. So here's the, this is, uh, I did, we didn't cover this in the other videos. So this was kind of fun. So yeah, now, now we're hacksing. Now we're hacksing. We're hacksing with the Cali. Is the nmap bound here? I bet it's not even on here. Oh, it's not. <laughs> How does Cali Linux not have nmap installed? Are you kidding me? Really? Is there something better that I don't know about? Okay, that was total diversion. But that command is run, Docker run, right? How, seriously, I was like bothering me. Someone figure that out. Why doesn't Kali have nmap? I mean, that's like the most basic of security tools. Um, I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so that's the first command. Now. You want to see, so we spent all that time with Docker Run. You guys remember when we, the first time we did uh, No Space That Needs Rainbow Tables? Um, uh, yeah. So Docker Run is actually two commands combined into one. It is a Docker pull, and it then it does a Docker uh, start, and then it executes into it using the default. So those are three different Docker commands. They're all built into one. Um, and that you'll know that because if you get, like when I do this right now, it just comes right down because it's here, right? But if I delete the image, uh, so let's do that. So to delete the image, uh, the shortcut for deleting the image is RMI, uh, remove image. And and that will that's one of your commands we're going to learn later. But this deleted the image uh, that you downloaded. It'll force you to do the download again and get the latest. Uh, you don't have to remove the image like that to, delete, to get the latest if you don't want. You can just do a pull again and it'll get the latest and we'll show that in a second. But um, so you just do, but now if I do, instead of doing a Docker run this time, let's do a Docker pull. Well, actually, no, let's do two things. Let's do, it's a pretty small one. So let's do the run and see the pull happen automatically and then we'll delete it again and I'll show you that happening. Oh, it's only 55 megabytes. That's not bad. That's why it doesn't have Nmap. <laughs> That's a pretty damn small image. Um, 
so I mean, I'm streaming and stuff. It shouldn't be taking that long though. Why is it taking so long? What's going on? It must be. I, I'm I'm going to say that there's a lot of people pulling images from Docker right now. I don't know how they support all that bandwidth because that's there's a lot of data transfer happening to Docker every night. Um, because it, you know everybody's pulling images down, and throwing them away. <laughs> Not everybody caches them the way that we did. Uh, but you'll this is this is taking way too long. So I'm going to do something smaller. I don't know. Let's do Ubuntu. Ubuntu is already here, so it just runs right. If this image is already there, we exit. So let's let's remove that one. RMI, RMI is going to remove Ubuntu now. Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu must be used by something else. Uh, okay, so something was used. Oh, I had a running container that's using it. That's fine. So, uh, but now if we do it again, it's going to see it has to download it and get it. That was pretty fast download, right? All right, so let's remove it again. And the dash F is to force it in case if there's if there's a container that needs it, that container is going to get deleted too. And we already talked about the difference between images and containers. Uh, and that's what I, I want to show you. So the next thing is to how to see all this stuff. So let's actually do the pull and then we'll do that. So Docker pull. Uh, <laughs> it's a, yeah, I slowed down the whole all the, all of Docker Hub down. I probably gonna have to get, they're gonna get, give me a call. Like your your image is way too big. I don't know. So if that happens, you can you can actually host images on GitHub and all over the place now. You don't have to just put them on Docker Hub. So as you can see, it didn't take very long to pull the image, and that didn't start it or run it or anything. That just pulled the image. That was it. And so if you want to see all your images on the system, uh, it's Docker images. Um. And there they are, and I've got a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, some of them I should be deleting. You really don't have to worry about having a lot of images because, oopsie, because um, it's not hurting anything. I, this is another cool thing. When you pipe it to another program, it'll make it so that it tries to draw it well for you. I don't have a very wide screen right now, so it's kind of hard to read. Um, there's, there's all different kinds of ways to list. Uh, you can actually filter. You can provide a filter so it only gives you certain, you know, key fields and list the ones that match and everything like that. And so it just shows you the images. Now remember, the images are not running in any way. They're not running. They never were running. Uh, they're there to be run as containers. And so then when you make a container with run or start, uh, start only works with the container that's already been created. By the way, that thing, that always confused me. <laughs> always, always confuse me. So the next thing, how, how do I see all the containers? Now, containers are things that are images that are running or that have at least been run once. So then we do this. We do Docker PS. And it's interesting that it's PS because that, remember I said about Kubernetes being kind of like the operating system and programs kind of like being the, and, and containers and images kind of like being the programs. And when they become containers, they are, they're the same as processes. Well, there you go. PS, it's the same thing that you would look to, to use to look at all the running processes on a computer. PSEF shows you all the running processes on a computer. Well, so Docker PS shows you all the running processes on uh, your Docker, on your instance, on the Docker installation on your computer. Now, as you can see, I've got I've got a couple containers that are running right now. Uh, registry, this is actually really, really cool. Uh, I won't give us, it's really hard for me not to talk about it, but... Uh, I'm using Kind, and I've got a full uh, a full container registry uh, that Kind uses instead of pulling from a remote registry. It uses my local Docker as a register. So if if you know what I'm talking about when I say that, that's fine. That's not for the beginners. But if you if you're advanced and you're getting into Kubernetes, you really want to look into Kind, and you want to look into adding um, the register container, registry container, which uses your local Docker, Docker images installs as a register. So you don't have to depend on Docker hub or any other private sort of register. Um, anyway, uh, back to the beginner stuff. So, so these are containers that are running. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here we haven't talked about yet. Uh, this is, I told you, uh, two days ago, you can, you, you know, a container is a sandbox when it's running, it's very secure. And, and then you can poke holes in it in different ways. You can say, I want to see this file. I want to see this directory. I want to expose this internet port, which is how you communicate over the network. And that's what this is. This says uh, anything that tries to go to port 5000, like through a web address or something. We need to talk about networking eventually. And I, I don't know what day it is on. And you'll understand a lot of that more. But that's what's going on. Um, 
and this says here is this is port 80 that's the world wide web it says it's actually listening and and so that's what's going on there so those are the running ports if you, if you want to see all the containers not these containers are actually running right now that means they're in memory and they're doing their thing and they would answer requests if i went to the website all of that if you want to see containers that have been paused or stopped they're kind of synonymous in the docker world then you can do ps uh whoops docker ps dash a and that will show you every single container you have here and if you can't tell you can get a lot of these over time and i as you can see tonight i have been working on a lot of stuff over time i've been just it's, it's just this big garbage heap of stuff if you want to avoid a garbage heap like that in which you can prune uh we're not going to do prune right now i'm going to let you read about that and, and go through and do it but you're eventually going to want to learn how to prune and what prune will do is it'll get rid of all the non-running containers um I, I, and that's that's a different command. I'll get there in a bit. But if you would rather not do that, just make sure that whenever you start up a container with run, uh, that you dash rm. And then it just deletes the container right away as soon as it finished. It's not laying around. Uh, if you notice these crazy things over here, just I'll jump ahead a little bit. Uh, these are, you can refer to a container either by name, by, by number over here, or by checksum, which is a big long thing. It shows when it runs. Or this guy right here. And we'll, we'll eventually get... I don't know if, if setting up Docker names is within the, the Beginner Boost scope. Um, but as I've said before, the purpose of Beginner Boost is to tell you what you don't know so you can go learn it. Uh, there are So the summary of this video is there's a lot of Docker commands. And I'm telling you the Docker commands you must know. and But there's a lot of other commands that you should eventually learn if you want to make your own Docker files and stuff like that. Um, yeah, uh, and then, but for right now, we're just gonna we're just gonna use these names for now. Okay, so so run ps Docker ps is stuff is my thing running or not, uh, and then start. So uh, you can run a container. This is probably the this was a really hard thing. Uh, could cause problems if you don't clean up properly, right? Uh, if you don't if you don't clean up, yes. So so. We, tomorrow, we are going to start building our container. And we're going to use that container as if it was a, a Linux computer. And we're going to, over time, we're going to build it. We're going to put the stuff on it. We're going to write code on it. And we're going to build it into your own workspace so that you know how to do that without the, in, the, in the sort of simplest way. And then if you want to come back to it later and get really, you know, deep dive, you can do the whole Docker file thing and go about it that way like I did. But for right now, we're just going to go into the, to the, you know, how do you start it? And so tomorrow, the command we're going to use for that, so let's say I have Ubuntu, right? So Docker start uh, Ubuntu. I don't have an Ubuntu container, right? So it's because you don't have one. So let's do this. Let's just do Docker run uh, and just, just for now, always put IT, okay? Uh, Docker run Ubuntu and, and it's just going to use the default and it's going to run an Ubuntu image. All right. Now, um, the, the command I want to teach you now is called attach. So you see this number here? Uh, that's why I showed you PS. This is the unique identifier for this container that's running. And if you want to get back in here, so if I just exit, this is the most confusing part of all of Docker for me when I started. So when you just exit, you're like, well, where did my container go? Right? If I do Docker run Ubuntu again, my number's different. Right? Not to mention, I might have cleared the screen. I can't even see the number. Right? Uh, and that, that really confused me at first. But that's where you have to remember the ephemeral nature of containers. Containers, they run and then they, they save as containers. And they're still there. So I would have to go see them. You know, if I, I could do... Uh, docker ps dash a and you don't know about this yet but if i look through the whole list i should be able to see that number here now i'm going to cheat and use a command you don't know yet called grep uh, but i could grep out this number uh, and go find it right and i can see oh there it is <laughs> what a name <laughs> that is totally randomly generated 
I, it's sort of, what is up with my computer today? <laughs> uh, so this is my randomly generated name for my container. So if you would like, <laughs> I mean, at least it's a mnemonic device. You'll never forget this video after today. You'll never forget this command because how do I get back to Sweet Beaver? <laughs> In order to get back to my container, I have to attach to Sweet Beaver. That is not an exaggeration. That is the factual. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I'm kind of embarrassed. I'm getting red. Uh, okay, so <laughs> that was randomly generated. All right, so where's Sweet Beaver? Okay, come here, Sweet. <laughs> oh God, I can't say DB. It's I say I every time you say. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh even darker everything is trolling me today okay so, so docker this is the actual command you'll never forget the attach command now for better or worse i'm like red i'm like sweating i'm red i'm so embarrassed uh <laughs> I'm like so red. I'm like turning pink. I'm so red. I have nine minutes. Okay, here we go. So Docker attach to sweet <laughs> beaver. Oh, it's not. Okay, I have to start it. So thank you, Docker. I forgot about that. So I need to start up my sweet beaver before I can attach to it. <laughs> Am I just like so red right now? Oh. There she is. My sweet beaver is running. It's time to get time to connect. Time to attach. Oh, oh okay. So, yeah. uh, darker attach sweet beaver. There I am. I'm connected to sweet beaver. Uh, now if you, if you want to kill your sweet beaver, Oh my God, Objective Newton. If you want to kill your beaver, in my case, then I would just type exit. If you exit. <laughs> oh my God, I can't cry, I can't see. Okay, so to exit your sweet, <laughs> to exit your container. Oh, just type exit. But when you want to go back to your sweet beaver, when you want to go back to your sweet beaver and you try to start it up and you try to attach again, it'll, it's gone because, you know, like all containers, you have to start up your container. You have to start sweet beaver and then you can reattach to sweet beaver. <sighs> <laughs> it's 907. We're way over time. Oh. <sighs> Uh, okay, so those are the main commands. Um, every those are the, really the main commands you need to use. Um, there is the remove command, but I don't want to remove my container right now. Um, so yeah, the containers were harmed on Docker. No, because because they were not, and we did this safely. Our sweet beaver was contained because it's a container, so. Everything that happened in the Sweet Beaver is safe. <laughs> These are all factual statements. This is <laughs> everything that happened. In fact, watch. You want to you want to see me kill my Sweet Beaver? <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm going to kill my Sweet Beaver for a bit and see. And you guys will be sad. I'm going to do the command. I'm going to reattach to my Beaver. And so, oh God. Um. All right. So attach. And then let's let's say. Oh, I don't know. Let's go to slash and do rm-rf slash. That command that you love to do. Make sure you're in your in your container when you do this. And and you're gonna kick that. Oh, see this this is why now you can actually next time someone tells you to do a fork bomb, which don't do a fork bomb. Uh yeah, I know it's too dangerous. Don't do this command, guys. It's a horrible command. But I'm trying to show you that you can't. You can hurt your programming. You can hurt your container and come back. Let's do something that's a little bit less dangerous. Okay, so I don't know. Let's say you removed, you know, a home directory thing. The point being is that 
you, if you if you fork bomb it though, you will take Docker down. So don't do that if you know how to do that. But it is a place to experiment on some of the things that are more dangerous than other things. Um, and then you can exit out and you'll be good to go. All right. That was fun. That was fun. I think... Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. What, where's my where's my start? Where's my starting comments? My banner. I lost my banner. Damn it. Where's my banner? Using basic Docker commands. All right. So this has been using basic Docker commands. Um, and uh, among the other commands that are left for you to go study on your own is stop. Now, if you exit out, it'll stop. Oh, there's one other thing I do want to show you about this. I'm glad we removed. And RM is to remove them. Um, and there's one last command that I want to show you, though, that's actually really useful. Uh, so Docker start. I, I'm never going to forget that name. So that's useful for this video. Uh, Docker attach. Uh, and we are still on the boost. Yep, we're almost done. So if you exit, you have to restart it. And this some, somebody showed me this. It's pretty hard to do. I'm sitting back and figure out how to do it. I don't do it very much. But if you do, um, I'm trying to figure out something that I could do. Let's watch the time or something. Okay, so uh, watch date. All right. So is that, did you get that one really? Um, so here's a running process, right? So if you want to detach from your container without messing it up, uh, someone told me the other day that you can control PQ and that actually detaches without killing it. And I really love that because a lot of times I just want to detach and then reattach. I don't want, if you type exit, like I'm used to doing, that will shut the whole container down and pause it. And you know, you have to start it back up. Uh, if you just attach it, if you just detach from it using that, that this control PQ, uh, then when you do Docker attach, uh, it should still be running and you won't have to restart. It won't say, it won't give you the error and it's still there. See there, it's still running. Uh, the container's terminal is streamed over a socket. Did not know that. Very cool. So if you do control PQ, uh, there you go. You get, it's still running. So now when you do Docker PS, uh, um, yeah. As you to do, I might have to do that. I don't, I don't, yeah, that might be the way to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to keep it running, right? Uh, they do take up RAM when they're running, so it's it's probably nice to not leave it running. Uh, and they start up pretty fast, you know. Um, so, so there's that. Um, uh, name it leave, yeah, that might be the thing to do if you had it to send those, those, those exact, those exact. It would, I don't know if, I mean, it would have to send those escape sequences as events somehow. Yeah, we'd have to figure out how to do that. That'd be really cool. Anyway, that, this video is a bit longer than usual, but I, hopefully it was, it was, it was fun. So as you can see, my container is still running there. Uh, and then I can, again, I reattach to it. Uh, and it's still, it's still a process that's even running, which, which I actually really like because, you know, you might want to actually start up container just to do some long running process or compile or something. You might just want to go babysit it and reattach to it. In the old days, you have to do this on a different server and then log in with a different account and then SSH into it. Or you could do it from a different Tmux window and have that do the same thing. There's lots of ways to do it. But having a container, that's, you know, a full blown container that's running uh, that you can just control PQ to detach from is, is super nice. So I'm going to go ahead and kill this one though. Exit and now you'll see it's not here. It's not here. It's still it's still there. So you know I can. What is it? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, is it there? I don't. I don't know. What is it? Inspect tiny lot. Does anybody know? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I'm trying to. I don't know. I don't know the one. I just look for the exact one. I don't know what it is. I think it's probably just dash A and then grep. Yeah, that'll show you the one. That's what I've been doing all along. I don't, there's probably another way to do it. Anyway, that's enough for this video. Uh, and actually, for the this this part of the boost, we'll be back uh, tomorrow. Make sure you join us. And if you want to do some more stuff, um, 
we will be doing uh, tomorrow's day seven of the boost. So uh, you can come on back and uh, we'll we'll figure out what we're gonna do there. I I I think I remember. I think I remember that we were gonna do. What are we doing here? Oh yeah, terminal. So tomorrow is the bash command line. Oh, I've been trying to tell everybody this. So if you want some homework, go get uh, learning the Linux command line PDF. It's free. Learning the Linux command line PDF from William Schatz. We talked about this last night as well. Uh, William Schatz. Uh, learning the Linux uh, command line. And uh, complex is... <laughs> it might be. I don't know. But we're going to mark this video and that'll be the end of that one. Uh, so that's, that's the thing we're going to do tomorrow. Um, uh, uh, William. And I'm going to go ahead and commit this so you guys have it. I'm probably going to go to bed. I've been working hard today. Uh, the Linux command line, TLCL. Okay, I got that wrong. The Linux command line from William. Is it, is it two Ts? It is, right? I'll put book. And it's, it's, it's free. Um, So I'll put that in there and I'm going to go ahead and commit this one. Uh, I'll, I'll commit it in a few seconds. I'm, I'm actually going to go look at some other stuff. I need to uh, put a link in there to, the, to yesterday's video. All right. Any, anybody else? Have, who should we raid? Should we raid somebody? If you don't, uh, who should we raid? Who should we raid? Twitch.tv. Go back and just watch someone. Do 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 do. Testing your Arduino cores. Oh, I remember him. Strager's up. We could give Strager a raid. He's got a lot of great people here. What's he doing? What's Mr. Strager doing? Oh, that looks like Python. Isn't that Python? Okay, one bracketed code block. So this one's using the backtick. Yep. Which means if I, I make cannot a stand a hearing his like keyboard. That, I need to escape these. <laughs> Everybody's got their own thing. There's like oh, some of my favorite streamers, they have like a mic right on their keyboard. Um you got somebody for me? Brillin? Oh, oh, where is X? Is she on? Yeah, let's raid her today. And then uh, I really like raiding her. And it, it she did, she did. And um, then you oh boy. do the long. substring and then substring. She's doing. What is she doing? Colin? God, Colin looks so much like Go. It's insane. A plus. Everyone did the same thing. Onion says. Onion. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? <laughs> I guess we're not rated in for now. Just I better I better just go raid her real quick. <laughs> work. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's so messed up, man. That your that's is just messed up. All right. So, make sure make sure you tell her hi for me. I'm going to go take a break. Is this Tom and Jerry? Oh my gosh! All right, is this Tom, is this from Tom and Jerry? Probably. That's before your okay, time. Okay, this part got a little fucked up. What happened here? Bye. <laughs> <gasps> 
Uh, do, 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 do. Whoa, we got a, we got a raid <laughs> from Rob. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello. Okay. All right, you guys say hi for me. I got to go.